Hi everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Blockchain Today where we have industry giants stepping in crypto and blockchain and we will also walk you through some of the best ways to invest into blockchain technology. So let's get started with the biggest news of last week. Social media giant Facebook is set to roll out its own cryptocurrency dubbed the Global Coin in 2020, according to a report from the BBC. The news and broadcasting organization said on Friday that Facebook is planning to launch the cryptocurrency-based payment system in a dozen countries by the first quarter of 2020 and is looking to start trials by the end of this year. Facebook has also apparently sought advice from officials of the U.S. Treasury and the Bank of England Governor Mark Carney regarding opportunities and regulatory issues for the initiative, which is internally referred to as Project Libra. More details about Facebook's crypto plan are expected to be, expected to be revealed in the coming months, said the report. According to the Financial Times, Facebook has also been in talks with both the Coinbase and Gemini exchanges, Gemini run by the Winklevoss twins, seeking to prepare a third-party regulated platform for users of its coins to store and exchange the asset. It cites two people familiar with the matter as the source of the information. Notably, Gemini is a firm founded by Mark Zuckerberg's old legal combatants, Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss, but they are also run a high, they also run a highly regulated exchange, a factor that will likely appeal to Facebook since regulation will be one of its key hurdles with its new cryptocurrency. The firm has also been discussing market creation and liquidity with Jump and DRW, top Chicago-based high-frequency trading firms. The news updates come soon after the recent reports that Facebook has been in talks with payment firms, including Western Union, Visa, and MasterCard, to back and fund its planned fiat-based cryptocurrency. The project is set to be developing a cryptocurrency helping Facebook's billions of users transfer money to each other and to make online purchases. On the 2nd of May, Facebook registered a new entity called Libra Networks in Geneva, which will provide financial and technological services and develop related hardware and software. Last month, it was reported that Facebook could be seeking to raise as much as $1 billion to fund the crypto stablecoin project. Now, this is groundbreaking as we all know. Adoption is one of the most critical roadblocks that blockchain faces today. Every altcoin and blockchain company is fighting to secure a large enough user base to avail the benefits of decentralization. And now here comes Facebook, a platform with a community large enough to influence political results in developed nations. And they say that they want to bring crypto to their users. Moreover, a stablecoin? Although little is known about their project, only fools would bet against this. Don't get me wrong, I dislike Facebook as much as possible and haven't used their services for years now, but with the ability to leverage their existing user base and bring in crypto that is a price-stable cryptocurrency or blockchain-based solution will catapult their vision of conducting payments through the channel. Something we know that Facebook has tried to achieve in the, far, in the past. Facebook has also been on a major recruiting spree over the last year, which shows that they are very confident about its market viability and are now focusing on building a great cryptocurrency. This is a fundamental space to watch as if they, I mean, if they do end up going to market and I hope that they start paying their users for their data using this wonderful stable coin. But, you know, we can only dream and we will definitely bring you updates on this in the future. So let's move on to our next topic and we're going to look at how many companies are in the blockchain space today. So a good place to start is with the first ever Forbes first ever blockchain 50 list, which is a list of the companies with more than $1 billion in annual revenues that are actively incorporating blockchain technology into their business models. This blockchain 50 list is full of technology companies that you'll recognize Amazon, Microsoft, Intel, Google, Samsung, SAP, IBM, but it is also inclusive of a large number of financial service giants such as Visa, JP Morgan, Fidelity, ING, Alliance, and State Farm. Most of these guys who we've spoken about uh, before in our previous podcasts. It's also interesting to see what cryptocurrencies these companies are choosing as the backbone of their blockchain system. The most popular platform is Ethereum, used by 22 out of the 50 companies, followed by Hyperledger, where 21 companies come into play, and uh, Fabrics and Corda, which are tied at 14 companies each. Now, the most interesting trends 
across these 50 companies is that nearly all of them are building more than one cryptocurrency. Also keep in mind that a company needs at least $1 billion in annual revenues to make this list, which may exclude what I think will be some of the biggest winners of the blockchain industry in the future. This list also excludes giants like Alibaba or even Facebook like we previously discussed as their focus is more on building their own native protocols rather than leveraging existing protocols such as Ethereum and Bitcoin. Once we see market validity of these products, we will see a more mature list from Forbes, but this is a great place to start in case you were thinking of getting a job in the blockchain industry and you were wondering who exactly is going to hire me. So lastly, let's move on to the most requested topics in our channel. We're going to dedicate as much time as possible in this podcast to this particular segment, and it is how to invest into the blockchain industry, and I'm going to walk you through the ways that you can do so. So let's start with investing into digital tokens, which is some of the easiest or the most known methods out there. One of the best ways to invest is just to buy a token. These digital tokens could either be bought during a token sale or on a cryptocurrency exchange in the secondary market. The process of taking on this kind of investment would involve researching the digital asset to find out its use case and the team behind the project, two main critical factors. These projects usually have a white paper where its use case is explained in complete detail. If you believe the project has great use case and the team is trustworthy, buying this token could be an excellent way to benefit from its future successes. Now, this could either be a good thing or a bad thing because this is very, very risky. Now, we as common people have very little technical knowledge of how exactly the blockchain technology works, let alone its business applications. To give you an example, uh, there is a great system or a great uh, protocol called Skynet.co that uh, goes ahead and builds microchips to make dumb devices or legacy devices smarter by just incorporating the chip into them. And they also use blockchain technology to secure the communications between these devices and also for payments and so on and so forth. So going ahead and reading their white paper, you understand the use case perfectly. But to understand how exactly it works, you need to have a full stack um, engineering background or you need to have to do this almost every single day. So it's very, very difficult for a common person to gauge if a product is going to be or a token is going to be successful or not. So the best way to go about it is obviously go ahead and look at the team, obviously go ahead and look at the use case, but also go ahead and look at what exactly is backing the token. Because if it's just a digital token that can that anyone can sell, then it, it doesn't really prove that it has a use case behind it. Maybe it could just be some people trying to grab money for a bit, and this has happened a lot in the past because of Ethereum and its uh, super easy methods of creating its own cryptocurrency. It is not very difficult to run into a scam when you're investing in digital tokens. But however, there are some great protocols. And once you're in the space for a little bit, once you've done enough of this research, you'll see similar applications coming up and wherever the industry is moving we should follow it as layman let's move on to the next one and we'll invest we'll talk about investing into blockchain stocks so a good indirect way to invest into blockchain is through the purchase of blockchain stocks it is an excellent option for investors who prefer dealing in shares and still want to benefit from the growth of blockchain you could buy stocks of companies adopting bitcoin as a payment network or making use of the blockchain technology to deliver services There are public companies like Microsoft exploring blockchain as a service on its Azure cloud. IBM, a market leader in the enterprise blockchain solutions known to be a prominent dividend player. And Intercontinental Exchange or ICE is a leading operator of international exchanges that is currently backing a new digital asset trading venture called BACT. So... Other notable stocks include Overstock, a US-based online retailer that accepts payments and advanced micro devices or AMD, which produces graphic cards to mine ASIC resistant digital currencies. So all of these companies are already regulated. They have a set process of going ahead investing and you can see that they are the ones who are adopting blockchain. So you can go ahead and trust these guys and say that, hey, look, I don't know this team. I don't know this uh, technology. I don't know this white paper, but I do know Microsoft. And if I do invest in Microsoft or IBM or AMD, then I can ensure that I have a little bit of diversified risk. But at the same time, I also have the ability to start leveraging the growth of the blockchain industry. And that's what's beautiful about investing into blockchain stocks. And uh, it gives you a very, very good headway in, and a uh, relatively risk-free headway into the blockchain industry investment game.
Now let's move on to the next one and this is a little more, a little trickier but we're going to talk about how we can invest into blockchain startups directly. Another way to gain financial exposure to the future growth of the crypto is by investing into early stage blockchain startups. Instead of just buying tokens, you could invest directly in a private company building a blockchain project with a promising use case. If the company eventually goes public, you would be entitled to dividends. B and K or Bank to the Future is one of the platforms where you can invest in startups in the blockchain industry looking to raise money. Some top blockchain companies like Ripple, Coinbase and Circle have leveraged the platform to raise funds. Of course, early stage businesses involve a high degree of risk. Some risk associated with its investment includes liquidity, lack of dividends, dilution of investment and even a total loss of investment in case of a hack or some kind of a fraud. The same risks, of course, also hold true for dig holding digital assets directly. So if you go ahead and invest into a token, you also are taking on the same risk. But if you want to get more hands-on with the industry, if you want to go for a higher bet, if you want to go for a way to go ahead and start influencing the blockchain industry, then this is the method for you. Where you go ahead and you try to invest into the blockchain startups directly instead of going and investing into their theoretical, dig uh, theoretical uh, digital asset, which is their cryptocurrency, which, is the, uh, which has a lot of risks associated to it. Uh, then let's move on to the fourth method, which is investing into blockchain ETFs and tracker certificates. Exchange traded funds or ETFs track an underlying asset like equities, commodities, derivatives or bonds. Blockchain's ETFs track publicly traded companies that are developing or using blockchain technologies. Perhaps the most prominent blockchain ETF is the Reality Shares Nasdaq Next Gen Economy ETF. It tracks the investment returns of reality shares on NASDAQ blockchain economy index which measures the return of companies delivering blockchain services. Alternatively, you can invest in trackers if you want exposure to leading digital assets but in a regulated format. The longest standing crypto tracker is the XBT Bitcoin Tracker 1. It provides investors with exposure to the price movement of Bitcoin without having to manage the risk of owning and storing the Bitcoin digital asset itself. You could also consider the Swiss Quote Multi Crypto Active Index Tracker Certificate, which trades on the Swiss Exchange or SIX. This tracker provides exposure to a basket of top crypto assets like Bitcoin. Ethereum, Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash. So they pretty much go ahead and cover not only the companies but also the assets and it's a wonderful mixture to go ahead and invest if you're someone who really believes in diversification. Now let's move on to the last point and we're going to talk about investing into tokenized funds. And this is personally my favorite method. If you cannot pick individual blockchain startups to invest in, tokenized investment funds provide investors with good exposure to several digital asset investments through the purchase of a single digital token. There are also tokens that provide investors access to a diversified basket of many crypto assets to reduce overexposure to the risks of one volatile asset. For example, investors seeking broad exposure to prime digital assets could also purchase crypto's 20C20 token. It allows you to track the performance of top 20 coins in the crypto asset market by holding a single token. There's also Spice VC's Spice token that allows investors to own a stake in promising blockchain companies indirectly. Some of the companies in their portfolio include Bact, Slice, InvestorCrowd, Lottery.com and Securitize. So there you go guys, these are the 5 most used methods to invest into the blockchain industry and this concludes our podcast for today. We hope that our information brings in exciting ideas in your minds and we also hope to see you here again next week. If you like the video, then please like and subscribe and let us know if you have any suggestions down in the comments below and we will see you guys next week. Bye-bye.